Hello, Pathways class. Um, I hope you're doing well. Another day in our uh, self-isolation here. Although I did see Josh McDonald out on his bike yesterday, hanging out, uh, getting some fresh air, which was good to see. I uh, wanted to talk about what I have in the Google Classroom today. You will see this document there. It's seismic waves and earthquakes. Earthquakes are really cool. Uh, well, not unless you're in one, but they're cool from Pennsylvania because we don't really have them. Uh, but to see what's going on. And there are waves, seismic waves. So I have this document in your Google Classroom um, with a couple of questions for you to fill out. What causes, this should say causes, what can cause an earthquake? What is the epicenter? What is the focus? What is a P wave and what is an S wave? And I have some resources here in your Google Classroom. And I know it's a lot, but don't get freaked out. Each of those video clips is very short. Two minutes, five minutes each. Um, these first three here are sort of Earthquake 101, understanding earthquakes from National Geographic, what could cause earthquakes. So that will help you with the first one. Uh, I'm going to skip this one for now. Uh, this talks about P waves and S waves. When an earthquake happens, you get seismic waves. Um, that talks about that what those are in that um, video there. And then earthquakes are measured on the Richter scale. Um, that gives you an idea of how severe the earthquake was. There was a system in place years ago, and I forget the name of it, um, but it went by Roman numerals, and it was how much damage was done. They started the scales, like if you looked out, well, how much damage would, was done? That was a 1 or a 2. But it really wasn't a great scale because you could have a, an earthquake that happened in a remote area, like in a forest, a really bad earthquake. And it didn't do much damage because, well, there's some trees down. But if you had a not-so-powerful earthquake happen in a city, uh, well, you could see a lot of damage. So it really wasn't the best way of determining the size of a or the magnitude of an earthquake. So a Richter scale was developed. And you can see how the Richter scale works in that video there. Again, another short four-minute video. Um, what I did want to go to was lastly go to this latest earthquake one after you got some earthquake knowledge then i'll i think I'll, yeah put this link in your google classroom and this shows where current earthquakes earthquakes in the last 24 hours have happened and every spot on here is an earthquake in the last 24 hours and you'll notice they're almost all along plate boundaries except for this guy here which i believe that's hawaii there that was probably something volcanic um, they're along plate boundaries where one plate is either rubbing up against, going over or underneath another plate boundary. Um, you'll see a cluster of them here, oops, zoomed in a little too fast, around California because we know there's plate boundaries there. Um, this here, it's a 2.6, a 2.5, that's what it is on the Richter scale. Um, that's a 2.6, a 2.5. Now, epicenter and focus matter. Oh, here's a 4.9 in Japan. Um, because you can have a really not so powerful earthquake, but close to the surface. So you could have a 2.6 that happens 5 miles down, 10 miles down. Well, you're probably not going to feel that. If you have a, a 2.6 that happens only a mile below the surface, you're going to feel that. So it depends how deep it is. So... You got to look at epicenter and look at focus of where it's at, um, how deep it is. That de will depend on damage and how much you feel. So when you're all done, check it out. Um, this website here about where earthquakes are happening, um, how how where their Richter scale is. Um, here's uh, basically some 2.7s, 2.8s. Here's a 4.6. And where they're at and how deep they were because that will help determine uh, so here's one here this was california and they still use some roman numerals that is whether you would see whether you'd feel it or not um let's see did you feel it a three. Oh. so did you feel it a three It shows where it's at, and a three was weak. Probably did not feel that. No damage. 
shaking light. Okay, so they do use some Roman numerals um, where you feel up because that has to deal with how strong it was, but also how deep it was in the ground. So check those out. If you have any questions, email me uh, or put a comment here and uh, hopefully you enjoy learning about earthquakes a little bit. And we'll wrap this up tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing your responses in this document here turned into the classroom. All right, everybody. Bye.